Hello everyone. In this tutorial we are building an app that allows user to download a file from the web server. As you can see on my local web server I have a folder named files which is the location where I put some random files. First we will create a PHP script that will return all available files on the server. We will use a get method to trigger this script. In order to trigger it, we must append our network request with the parameter. Parameter that I will use will be named list underscore files. Ok, so first we check if this parameter list underscore files is provided. If it is, then we can proceed. Create a new array that represents our available files. Then use the PHP's function named glob that returns an array of file names or directories based on a specified search pattern. Provide your folder location along with the type of files that you want to select. Our goal is to select all files, so our search pattern is star dot star. This means select all files regardless of their extension type. Then we append our array with the selected file. In order to get the name of the selected file, we can use the integrated function named base name. Next, change the content type to JSON and finally use JSON encode function to return the array as a response. Let's quickly test this. As you see, when we call the script with our parameter, we get an array of available files. Ok, now switch to Android Studio. This is the layout of the main activity. A simple button that will initialize a network request to the PHP script and a list view that will show the results. In the manifest file, add the internet permission along with the right external storage. Now go to the build.gradle settings and add the OKHTTP OK library in order to make network requests. Now switch to the main activity. As you see, I just declared some variables that we need. A button, a list view, array adapter for the list view and array list in which we store name of available files. First on the menu is permission checking. Without it, our app would crash on Android API level 23 and up. So create a new method. Here we check if the storage permission is not granted. If the permission is not granted, then we will ask for it. Otherwise, we will just continue with the code execution. So just create a new method in which we will write rest of the code. To check for the user's permission response, override the onRequestPermission result method and then just check if the permission was granted. And if it was granted, then just call the method in which we execute the rest of the code. If permission was not granted, then we will ask for it again. Ok, so now we will reference our views with the findViewById method and also initialize an array adapter with the provided array list. Then set the click listener on the button. Here we have to make a network request. It must be done in the background thread, so let's create a new thread. Create a new OKHTTP OK client along with its request. Then just provide the URL to the PHP script and append the URL with your get request parameter. Execute this request by creating a new response object and call a method new call that contains the request from the above. Ok, so as you know, we are getting a JSON array as a response from our PHP script. So we will create a JSON array here. In order to fill this array with the data from the response, call the body method from the response object itself. Now we should read this array 
and we can simply use a basic loop to read it. Getting a file name is easy, just call the getString method from the JSON array and provide the current item index. When the file name is read, it should be appended to our list. So call the add method and provide the file name that we read. Now imagine if we click on button several times. Each time it would append the list view with the same results. And then we would get duplicates and we don't want them. We can just uh, skip them by checking if the file name already exists in the list. To do that just call the method index of and provide the current file name. If the file name exists in the list, it will return the index of that file. And if it is not in the list, it will return number minus 1. Now our list is appended and we want to show these changes on the screen. Use your array adapter and call the notify method to achieve the result. The only problem here is that we are making this call from the background thread while our list view uses the main thread. But we can simply fix this issue by using a handler. So let's create a new handler. Now just make a new post request to the main thread and paste the code inside of the run method. On this way notify method will be executed in the main thread. If we don't do this then the app crashes. Let's quickly check the code so far with the emulator. First we accept the storage permission and then we click on the button. And here they are, file names from the server. Ok, so next step for us is to able to click on the list item and then to start downloading a selected file. First let's add a click listener on the list view. In our network request we will need a name of the selected file. We can get it from the parametered view which is the actual text view from the selected row. So just create this string variable. Alright, now we will again make a network request and because of that we will create a new thread. Like before, create a new OKHTP client with the network request. In the URL of the request builder, provide the location folder where files are stored and then just append the URL with the selected file name from the list view. Then create a new response object and execute the request. When the file starts downloading, we will show the progress dialog that will display the current percentage of the downloaded file. When we set up the progress dialog, we have to provide the maximum value. In this case, it is the file size. To get that file size, we can use the content length method that can be extracted from the response body. Now we can use the buffered input stream class to read the incoming stream, which is the actual file that has been split into little pieces. Then we create a new file output stream that allows us to write this data into the phone's memory. As a parameter we need to provide a path where the file will be saved. We will save it into the download folder of the phone. Create a new byte array which is needed in order to save the incoming data into the temporary memory and then write that data into the storage memory. Then again we will need a variable of total read bytes so that we can compare it with the total file size and with that number we can update our progress dialog percentage. Also we need to keep track of bytes that are being read at the time of streaming. So we go into the loop and we use read method from the input stream in order to read and save bytes. While it is reading we will append the total number of read bytes with the bytes that are currently being read. And then we use the write method in order to save this data into the storage. After the whole process is done 
We must flush and close the stream to prevent memory leaks. Now we will define a progress dialog. So create a new progress dialog and set a title for it. Then call the setMax method which sets the max value of our progress dialog. Here we should write the size of the incoming file. But the problem is that our file is represented in bytes and it can easily go out of the integer range. So the best way for us to deal with this problem is to normalize the value. That means that we can just type number 100 and then while the file is downloading we just normalize the red value to the round integer. So it will be like 1, 2, 3 and so on. Ok, let's also add set cancelable method so that we can't cancel the progress dialog by touching it. Also add the progress style that you like. We'll show this progress dialog when the file starts downloading and since we are doing this in background thread we need to call the handler to take care of the progress dialog. So here we will just call the show method to reveal the progress dialog. And now we need to update it in real time. We can do it in a loop while the file is being downloaded. Here we can call the setProgress method and then we just normalize the value to be a round integer. Just divide the current red size with the file's actual size and multiply it with 100. This will give us the round number from 0 to 100. And when the process is done, call the dismiss method to cancel the dialog. And that's it folks. So let's test this with the emulator. First I will click on this zip file. As you see we are getting the progress dialog with the percentage indicator. Now let's click on the image file. We got no dialog because process went too quickly. That's because the image size is too small. Ok, now let's go into the download folder. As you can see here both files have been successfully downloaded. Thank you all for watching and I see you in next tutorial. Goodbye.